you came in as a singles wrestler. That was yeah. obviously part of the plan. Uh -huh. At what point did you get paired up with Shad? Well, I got paired up with, I don't know if you remember, my first tag team partner, we will call the Gang Stars. It was with, um, I don't know if you remember, Abraham Washington. He was with WWE. Yeah. yeah. Me and him were a tag team. It was actually his idea. He was like, yo, man, we should... Uh, come out with these bulletproof vests, wear jeans, Timberland Brutes, from you. you're from New York, we should rock grills. Nelly at the time had that song, Grills, let yeah, me see yeah. your grills. And I'm like, it sounds very stereotypical, first of all. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, come on, man, you wanna make money? You're like, you, wanna be, you have to be a character, you have to like, right now you're just wearing tights, you're just a wrestler, you don't really, we don't stand out if we just wear trunks and, and, and um, tights. And I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. And we did the, we didn't have really like characters, we just did the look. But we were very charismatic, and we blew the roof off. Mm. Like, and me, that was me and Abraham Washington. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stick with this. And then after a few months, uh, Abraham Washington had some uh, personal issues going on in his life that prevented him from coming to OVW. And, they were, and then I'm sorry, Danny Davis and Al put their heads together. And were like, look, this this young man, he's been he's he's been here every day consistently. He's talented. He's got charisma. He he's good on the mic. He's young. What can we do with him? You know, he's, he's, she's showing, you know, he's showing, we have to do something with him. And they're like, let's, let's put him with Shad. They asked Shad, do you, how you and JTG get along? Yeah. You, you want to, we want to make you guys a tag team. And Shad was like, yeah, it's cool. That's like my little brother, blah, blah, blah. And then that was the, the, the birth of crime time. Wow. So yeah. if it wasn't for Abraham Washington leaving OBW, <laughs> crime time never would have been a thing. Exactly. What was, Wow. That's amazing how that all came together. Yeah, at time I was like, like at, t at the time I was hurt. I'm like, because before I got signed, like I say, about two or three weeks before that, I was sitting on the sideline. I was actually thinking about like leaving. It was like, because I was just depressed. I wasn't on TV. I'm showing up every week and nothing's going, nothing's happening for me. Um, and I'm like, man, how much longer I'm gonna do this? Because I'm working at a daycare. I'm like, I'm getting paid a little below minimum wage. And you had moved to Louisville at this point. <laughs> yeah, I had moved to Louisville at this point. Yeah. So, okay. well, that's a big move in, in itself. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So then you and Chad hit it off instantly? Yeah, we were actually friends before we were uh, a tag team. Yeah, he looked out. He, Chad, always, as soon as I, me and Chad met, I was introduced to him through Elijah Burke at an at a amateur show. He was at my first amateur show. He came to, to watch and see what was, you know, was going on. There's not too much to do in Louisville, so if they have an amateur show, why not show up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, we hit it off right then and there. Wow. And we were cool from there, but we never thought about being a tag team together, you know, because it's because it's, it's such a the um, height difference and experience level, like he was already on on TV, yeah. local TV, and I'm just, you know, learning how to put a match together. So we didn't even, it didn't even cross our minds. It might be tough to narrow <laughs> down to just one, but what's your go to Shad story? Oh, man, we have so many. You gonna make me pick one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We have so many and so many I can't tell. <laughs> uh, one of our, well, like one of my uh, favorite pastimes with Shad, you know, we um, he loved he loved to take edibles. Like he didn't smoke, but he would love edibles. And uh, I remember one time after the show, we had some edibles after the show, and it didn't kick in yet. He's like, hey, "Let's take it so long." I'm like, "I'll take another one." I, I took another one. I'm like, "We was in the hotel room," and it's like, it was like, I'm not feeling this, man." He was like. Don't worry, it'll kick in. Cause I'm not used to edibles. And then I'm like, you, I'm like, I'm starting to get hungry. You want to go red lobster? He's like, that's the perfect place to go. <laughs> and then um, I think when we called, when we uh, called the Uber and was waiting for it, it I was like, ooh, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to Red Lobster and we were high and we were just enjoying life and just talking about how good life is and enjoying those uh, uh, cheddar biscuits at Red Lobster. <laughs> that so good. And then that became like, uh, if there was a Red Lobster around, we will, uh, we will do some edibles and go to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> so that became the routine. Yeah, it became one of our, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. And munchies, oh man. Yeah, yeah, the edibles would get you the munchies and we would just be in our hotel rooms and our boxes. Just <laughs> He'll be on his laptop uh, working on his movies and I'll be watching TV and just zoned out <laughs> i'm sure not a day goes by where you don't think about shad. every day yeah i got a lot of photos up in my uh room of shad i have so many photos of uh shad in my phone i'm scrolling it's like I, yeah, I can't get away from him but it's a good thing though yeah, yeah. yeah so when like in your everyday life what are the memories that come to mind um shad well, like i don't know if a lot of people don't know like me and shad were like best friends we were like brothers you know we were pretty much like family like i spent 
a few Thanksgiving with him and his family. Um, if I had an issue, financial problem, or if I had just like personal problems, you know, he was there. You know, he he was always there for me. Um, there was a there was a I remember when I was going through my uh, separation with my with my ex wife, and you know he could tell. You know, we've been around each other for so long. We we just know when something's wrong. And I was trying to hold it in, but he got it out of me. And one one time we went to the gym. We was about to go to the gym, and I was just out of it. I couldn't couldn't work out. He was like, "Come on, let's go, go. We're not working out right now." He was like, "Your head is not in the game right mm-hmm. now." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." And he, I didn't know what he was taking. He was like, "We're going to the beach." He went to the beach, and he was like, "Let it out." I'm like, "Let what out?" He was like, "Let it out. Talk to me." We talked, and then we had like a rocky moment. We started jogging, <laughs> and then he was, and then he started getting. He ran in front of me, and he just started. Uh, he was like, "Come on, run! I want you to run." I started running. He said, "Faster, faster!" And like, and then he started uh, talking to me about. You, what are you going to do? You're going to make her, like, just kind of, like, you're going to move forward. You're not going to let that stop you. And he started getting in my head. And then I, like, he, I can't remember what he triggered, triggered, but I broke down and started crying. And then I stopped. And I was, like, he acknowledged that I was crazy. Like, it's going to be all right. Good. You're going to move forward. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And then, like, all right, just because you're crying doesn't mean you can stop. <laughs> you stop running. He was like, <laughs> we kept running. And I let it all out on the beach. And we just sat there. And we, uh, we stared into the ocean. We just talked. And that's the time. We had a lot of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had Mark Kopani, uh, Mohammed Hassan, on the show recently, mm-hmm. who was working with Shad on the graphic novel. Oh yeah, Assassin, Assassin, yeah, right, Assassin and Son, and and he was saying the thing he loved about Shad was that if Shad said he was going to do something, he did it. He did it, no matter yeah. how, how crazy. crazy yes. yes, that's Shad. Yeah, no matter how big the dream was, you knew he was going to accomplish it. Mm-hmm. That was Shad, exactly. Wow. <laughs> so where, how did you find out the news that he was missing? His his uh, wife called me the night. It was Sunday. I was I was getting ready to go to bed, and um, his uh, he Shad's phone called me. It said it said Shad, and then I'm like, "What do you want?" Like I'm expecting it to be Shad, and yeah. it's his wife. He's like, "Hey, Jason, this is um, Siliana. Um, we can't find Shad," and I'm like, "I'm automatically thinking it's a rib. It's a joke. Like, what do you mean you can't find Shad? Like he's big. Seven, like how do you like?" Like he's oh we um we lost him while we were on the beach, and I'm like you have his phone. So I, I'm thinking it's a rib. I'm gonna go along with it. I was like she's like can you help me find him? Like yeah, let me go sharp. I'll be over there. I'll come help you find him. And I'm like I'm, let me just prepare myself because I know he's because we me and Shad have a playful like we like right now I'm like cool. But when I'm with Shad, we both let out like a childhood like a child like. <laughs> We just become children. I don't know. We just become very immature, and we just have fun, and then we're back to being... <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 You could turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, let me just prepare myself. He's going to pop out of somewhere, bear hug me, and throw me in the sand, or throw me in the ocean, and record it, and put it on. I'm like, I'm just preparing myself. And then when I get to um, Shad's house, I meet his wife in car, and I meet his wife and um, his son in the car, and she had, like, flashlights. I'm like, yeah. I was like, you need, like, flashlights? What do you need flashlights for? To look for Shad. And I'm like... Now I'm, I'm, I'm getting, like, scared. Like, what do you mean we going on the beach to look for if, I'm like, where are we looking for him? And his, his son was in the car, so she's like, I can't tell you right now. Like, so we yeah. got to the beach, and then she told me the whole breakdown. And I'm like, and then that's, I think after, like, an hour or two of uh, walking on the beach in Santa Monica, I kind of came to, what do you call it? Um, like, yeah, I think he's gone. That's like, I came to, like, Okay, yeah. this is... Like you accepted it. Yeah, I accepted it right there. And I couldn't cry or break down right there because his, his wife and son was there, so I had to be strong for them. And I was like, and the, from what she told me, the story that she told me, I was like, he, he got washed up. In, but I couldn't tell her that. I had to be there. She wanted the to look. Tide. Yeah, we were there till midnight, and I'm on the beach with a flashlight looking. I don't know what I'm looking for. Am I looking in the ocean? Am I looking on the broadwalk? Like, yeah. I didn't want to ask because it's like... <laughs> I was just there for for more like for support, and we were there till midnight, and it was started getting cold. I'm like, I'm, we could try again. Let's do it again tomorrow. But I kind of yeah. accepted it right there. How there. quickly did the police join in the search? That was the next day, but <clears throat> the day that it happened in the afternoon, they had helicopters. They had, from what I heard, they had they had the whole the, the, the works looking looking out for Shad, but they had yeah. to call it off at sunset because can't see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> I've heard some people say that you know Shad should w- w- receive the Warriors Award this year. He definitely should. If um, um, I don't know what, what's a bigger heroic act than putting your life on the line, you know, 
for for his son. I, but honestly, he would have did it for if it was another child. If it was probably me, he probably would have did the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt he would have. Yeah. <laughs> But like, do you think his his was his relationship with WWE good enough that he would be considered for something like that? I believe so because we went backstage a couple of times. Yeah, um, we talked to um, the head of talent relations, and you know they were like, they just, "We have an open door. We love to. You guys look great. We would love to have you guys back." And you know there was some talks about you know crime time coming back. You know they told us the door is always open. You know we just gotta you know make sure it's the right fit. And we were like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. And you know nothing nothing. Uh, materialized, but there were talks. We don't we, we don't know what would ha- what would happen if we if Shad was still here today. We don't know, but yeah, yeah there was definitely uh, talks of bringing Crime Time back. Hey, it's Chris, and thank you so much for checking out this video on my brand new YouTube channel, CVV Clips. As the name suggests, it's a place where I'm going to post clips from some of my favorite interviews. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit subscribe and also check out these videos right here. YouTube thinks you might like them.